something of a risk taker, as someone described her, and uh, among the millions and millions of people today who will be excruciatingly saddened by this tragedy are a number of her own school children who went down to the Cape yesterday, Steve, and were expressing, I remember on World News last night, how disappointed they were that the mission had not got off last night. And, of course, there were also the many students from her high school in New Hampshire who uh, were all in an assembly room watching the launch on television and were quickly returned to their own rooms uh, mm -hmm. by the teachers and the staff at the school after the apparent tragedy took place. Just to remind you of exactly when it did take place and, and also to, uh, to admit to you that we're very much as much in the dark as you are. We haven't heard much more from Mission Control than the bare basics. And it is, I think, probably, Steve, to some extent, a reflection of how successful the space program has been, and the shuttle program particularly, that those of us, like you and me, who followed the space programs with absolute passion 10 and 15 years ago, have begun to take it rather like the country did, rather casually, not knowing all of the details. So far behind schedule this year already, with two missions only flown, stated emphatically that we will never compromise safety standards for schedule. Those were his words uh, just a few days ago. Let's go back now in time a little bit to 11.38 Eastern Time as the last few seconds ticked away from the clock. You'll see the shuttle's three main engines. We have main engines they light start. there. Four, three, two, Everything appeared one. normal at this point. And liftoff, liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. This was the first time that a shuttle had launched from the pad that had not been used for 10 years back in the Apollo program. The second pad would have allowed NASA to have their ambitious schedule of 15 missions this year. Engines beginning throttling down now at 94%. The roll procedure completed. Most of the flight, 104%. You see the 700-foot flames trailing the two white solid rocket boosters, and that brown tank is the external tank that contains the volatile fuel to fire those. Let's look at the slow motion. You see the fire right at the bottom of the external tank, just above the flames. Then fire breaks out on the other side of the external tank. Then it explodes. It appears that the center of the external tank was the start of the explosion as it blew apart and turned into a huge fireball about nine miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. You can see on the right-hand side of your screen the white solid rocket still in flames, shooting off to the right. And the next shot, you'll see the other solid rocket still intact, shooting off to the left. The shuttle Challenger itself is attached to the external tank in several places. The two solid rocket boosters sit on the left and right side of that brown external tank. In that position, the shuttle was underneath. 11.38 this morning, it now appears that there are no survivors from Space Shuttle Challenger, the 25th mission, and the only fatalities since 1967 when three astronauts were killed in a fire at the Kennedy Space Center. Marianne? First, as you said, Tom, the first in-air disaster in the uh, Man in Space program of the United States. Let's go back to Washington now and read Collins. Well, as we know, the President has been informed. He is saddened. Now, the Challenger, Dan, is the real workhorse of the shuttle fleet. The four shuttles, the Challenger has been up ten times. It has been the one that is known among space people as the best of the shuttles. It was the one they seldom had trouble with. It was the one they were most confident with. So there was no real problem there. 
But the one thing that several people are talking about now, and there was great concern this morning, that is the freezing temperatures that we had. We had temperatures below 32 for about uh, 10 to 12 hours, starting about midnight last night. Temperature dropped below 32. It finally dropped below 28, which is a crucial figure here. Once they go below 28, they figure that icicles are going to begin to form. And this morning, we did see a lot of icicles formed around the superstructure of the shuttle. One of the theories, and I must emphasize, this is only a theory. NASA has not said anything yet. But one of the theories that is being looked at is the possibility that some of those icicles may have fallen during launch or may have, at some point, when they were shaken loose, hit the solid rocket boosters, creating a small hole. And that is what could have created the explosion that occurred about a minute and 12 into the flight. But that is only a theory, and is one of many things that is, they are going to be looking at. NASA announced just a few moments ago, Dan, that they said everything that they had from the shuttle prior to the explosion indicated there was no problem. They did not have on a preliminary check. On a preliminary check, they had no reports of trouble aboard the shuttle before the explosion actually occurred. Bruce, I want to ask what the, what the atmosphere was among those at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration about how eager they were to get this shut off. But I, I also, we try to strike a balance here for those who have been with our CBS News special report from the beginning and those who just may be joining us. We've had uh, a, a terrible thing happen. The Space Shuttle Challenger exploded into a gigantic fireball a minute and 12 seconds after liftoff this morning. The fate of the crew of seven, including the school teacher from uh, New Hampshire aboard, unknown at this hour. But Bruce, uh, NASA has been under extreme criticism. Uh, this pictures uh, of the crew and school teacher McAuliffe. She's the second from the left uh, on the top. Uh, others aboard that flight, and, and lest we forget, uh, what uh, brave people these were. Commander Francis Scobie, Michael J. Smith, who was the pilot, Judith Resnick, uh, astronaut, Ronald McNear, Ellison Onazuka, Gregory Jarvis, and the school teacher, uh, Krista McAuliffe uh, from New Hampshire. Now, Bruce, I was asking you, uh, NASA was, has been, for some little while, under tremendous pressure to uh, get on schedule. What was the atmosphere the last couple of days about this particular Challenger shot, which had already been delayed a couple of times? Well, Dan, there was some frustration here because this morning, uh, this year was the first flight that went off. That was uh, the flight that was delayed seven times before they got it into orbit. And then once they got it into orbit with Congressman Bill Nelson aboard, they'd hoped to return here to the Kennedy Space Center. And because of the weather, they were not able to. There were two delays before they could bring it down, and they finally had to bring it down in California. So once we started getting into delays here with the Challenger, there was some frustration. Uh, a lot of people were getting very concerned because NASA had an extremely ambitious schedule for this year. Fifteen flights, which is the most they've attempted in any year, and they were really concerned that the schedule was going to get backed up. There was a desire to get this off, if at all possible. Once before, when they'd had freezing temperatures, they'd had to postpone a uh, mission that was a, one year ago today, I believe, and they wanted to make certain that they could get this off. However, I must emphasize, Dan, NASA is always extremely concerned about safety. If anything, they are very conservative. They have come in for a lot of criticism from the media over the years because they have been so conservative. Every time they want to make any repairs, they always have a backup, they have a redundancy system to everything. So uh, while there had been criticism, NASA had said, we prefer to go the safe route, and therefore they would take that extra precaution. But there clear was frustration because of the building number of delays that have occurred here in recent weeks. Well, as we wait for further official word from uh, Mission Control in Houston or anyone else with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration about what happened this morning uh, as the Space Shuttle Challenger exploded with a crew of uh, seven, including the uh, school teacher aboard, uh, Bruce, I, I want to ask uh, you, if you can, to amplify a bit on, on why the temperature, you mentioned 28 degrees Fahrenheit, was considered to, to be a, a, a critical temperature uh, for those connected with the launch. Now, they went ahead with the launch. Uh, explain to me why that 28 degree mark was so important. And also, I'm not quite certain whether it got down to 28 degrees this morning in Florida. Well, the case is here, Dan, that 32, of course, is freezing. But once the temperature drops below about 28, that is when the icicles really begin to form.